probably a good idea to turn this on. Can everyone hear me? Awesome. So my name is Jana Haram Alvarez, and I am the project manager at Smallco. And this is Getting It Done, the Tools of the Trade for Ab App Dev Team Leaders. So I have been at Smallco for about two years now. My dad, over there, Albert, is also my boss, and he brought me onto the team. And this is just some of the wonderful people that I work with. So I didn't have much management experience when I got started. So we came up with a solution to both grow my knowledge in management and also our influence in the community. So we started a Crowdcast series, which is kind of like an ongoing live webinar series where there's different episodes uh, with Hazel, our business manager, and I, um, where we interview folks in the community about their best practices in project management. So initially when we got started and we started asking around, I didn't know what kind of response we would get, but ask and you shall receive, and I'm sure as everybody knows here, we come from a very generous community of people. So special thanks to Ernest, Susan, John, Mitzi, Evelyn, and Julia, who's not pictured up here for coming on the show. So I could probably write a book filled with all the amazing advice that we are given, but I've only got 10 minutes. So <laughs> if I could boil it all down to the most essential element, it would be that we are in the business of relationships. It's about the strength of your team and the bonds that you have with your clients that's gonna determine your success more than anything else. So, if it's all about the relationships, where do things go wrong and where can we improve? Communication. Communication is key. Failures in communication equal failures in your management. So, there are certain pitfalls that you can fall for. Brittle communication can occur within your team, between you and your client, and sometimes even within yourself. But Luckily, there are ways to remedy that. So, the first bit of advice that anyone will give you when you ask about better communication in your company, they'll say, adopt a project management app. And that will certainly help, but only if you have a strong foundation of communication already in place in your company. So, in building that foundation, know your team know their strengths, know their weaknesses, and know their personalities. <laughs> Your job as manager is to know who to go for for certain problems and to make sure that everyone on your team is working to their strengths and thus to their highest potential. And with time, you will realize that not everybody will respond well to, your, to the same style of management. So in getting to know your team, you'll realize how to speak to people in a way where they'll be most receptive. And that kind of leads into my second point. Speak a common language. Here's actually some of our team with an actual client there, Christian. So each of your clients come from an industry that has a wholly unique workflow and language that's already in place. And as project manager, sometimes you act as a translator to make sure that app mirrors the workflow of your client and they can see themselves in it. So to begin, start by building a clear, concise spec that everyone on your team and on your client side can clearly follow and understand. If you have problems when defining your project, you'll probably have problems down the line. So meet regularly with your team and your client throughout the whole life cycle of the project. It's your job to make sure that everyone's on the same page. 
as a manager, you're kind of like the captain of this ship. So make sure everyone is moving towards that common goal and ask regularly, are we still on course? So my last bullet point seems simple, but can be the trickiest. This is kind of like a hidden problem. Make sure you're talking to the right person at your client's company. So oftentimes you'll have your main point of contact when beginning a project, but that person might not be the right one for a variety of reasons. Either they're not the decision maker or perhaps they're not even aware of the workflows that you should be designing for. And sometimes there'll be a situation where there are people at that company that aren't even ready to move to a new system or they don't want to. And you might not find this out till later. So if you sense uncertainty on your client's side, always take a step back. And sometimes you might want, even want to save yourself the trouble and not take on the project in the first place. So to sum it all up, know your team, speak a common language, and make sure you're talking to the right person. So if you are interested in project management and want to hear some more tips and tricks from the best, um, follow our Crowdcast. And uh, they're recorded, so you can go ahead and look at the ones that have been, that have already been recorded and are in the past, and then keep an eye out for the new ones coming up. And uh, yeah, that's all I have. Thank you so much. I think we probably have time for questions, because that was really, I rushed through that. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions, comments? Yes. Yeah. So, I guess my, my question is how did you come up with the Crowdcast idea? And can you talk a little bit about the logistics of how that all, all of that? Yeah, well, Crowdcast is actually a new platform that we discovered. Um, my dad wanted to figure out a way to do a version of his uh, design masterclass, but something that could be remote and accessible to everybody and free. So we already were working with it on that, um, on that project. And then we thought, um, wouldn't it be cool if like, we interviewed people about project management? Because we, we know so many awesome people in the industry. And they have so much knowledge that can be tapped into. But there's not really, I hadn't seen a place where it would be easily accessible to me, except for community. Maybe. Um, so, and like the conversations, like style of it makes it, uh, I think, more accessible to somebody who just wants to, to listen to some good stuff. So, I don't know if that <laughs> answers your question. But um, I think somebody else had a question. Yes? Can you introduce Myers Day? Oh, yeah. Yeah, thanks. Something that's, it's interesting what it tells you if you actually honestly take the test. But then people take tests like that and then decide, well, I think it wasn't for this work, so I went for that work. If you do it all right. the time, you'll see a lot. So you can better adapt the situation you're talking about. Yeah. So I'll send you that link. Thank you so much. Yeah, we, when um, some of our team is in Serbia, and obviously we don't get over there very often to meet in person. But last fall, um, before we went over there, we had everybody take the 16 personality test just as a team building project. And honestly, it helped me so much as a manager because there's a, a section, um, if you just Google 16 personalities, um, if you take the test, there's a section where it will tell you a bit about how that personality deals in a workplace environment. And 
one of our guys in particular, um, it said under his uh, description, like, uh, doesn't respond well to like harsh comments or something like that. And like, we'll, we'll have trouble taking direction. And I was like, okay, um, I'll just spend some more time with him. Uh, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, he's missing certain things that I'm, I'm putting down. So yeah, it's, it's a fun exercise if you're interested in doing some team building at your company. Uh, it's pretty cool. So thank you again for that. Um, anybody else? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. What's your name? Simone. Simone, thank you so much. Dad? <laughs> well, um, recently, well, <laughs> no, but he did. Um, there was a client that um, they, they called us up and they're like, yeah, we've had to fire like the, fa the past three developers. And they're like, they have no idea what's going on. And it's like, okay, like, was there maybe, it's, it's the situation where if that person's having a lot of difficulty, you have to question whether or not it's the other person or if it's them who's actually the problem. So um, we asked them to uh, evaluate, maybe uh, consider what went wrong in those past projects. And then they kind of like stopped calling us. Maybe they took offense, but um, yeah, I'm glad we didn't take that on. I'm sure everyone can relate. Demetrius. Hello. Hello. Um, we start early. Yeah, that's hard. Um, I, I usually, I'm in a great position because I, I know my ignorance. And so I'm always asking my developers for advice and I will not tell, give them any promises until I've spoken to the team. And they're pretty good about going back and doing their research. Maybe they'll take like an extra two days to give me an estimate, but it ends up being worth it because, um, you know, it, I don't want to give the, the client a certain expectation um, and then be let down later. So I think if it, if it takes an extra day or two to have that conversation about uh, estimating a project, I think it's worth it. Um, just, and you can probably even charge for that. <laughs> so you should. Uh, I don't know if that really answers your question, but I'm, I'm always asking questions. I don't, I don't say anything until I check with my, my guys and gals first. Um, anything else? Well, um, if you see me later, I'd love to talk to you if you have any other questions and thank you so much.